Hello everyone and welcome to today's state of the world and uh, today it's just the one topic something close to my heart and a source of pain recently um, but my beloved Manchester United and uh, it's, a, it's a Man United is a topic I want to talk about in some of my videos so I thought today I've got a lot of uh, unloading I need to do a bit of a rant coming um, but uh, I thought if I get it all out of the way in one go, perhaps uh, we can touch on it um, with more brevity in uh, future videos. Um, and actually to start with, I'm not going to talk about many, I'm going to talk about our rivals. Um, and it, this is what pains me, but uh, Manchester City, uh, domestic treble, swept the board there. And then Liverpool winning the Champions League. And it's not just that they've won these trophies and... They deserve them. It's that left behind Manchester United. We've fallen behind. We're falling further behind. And in football or soccer, if you prefer, when you're not winning, all you've got left is banter. And I've got nothing I can banter Liverpool about. I've got nothing I can banter Man City about. They've got brilliant teams, brilliant squads. Um, like the managers, Klopp and Guardiola, I've generally not like Liverpool managers but what's not to like about Klopp um, and uh, that, that that makes it doubly hard I mean I've got nothing I can banter um, City and Liverpool fans over um, well done to them I, I suppose I can banter City on the on the the money and the and the uh, the oil money but United's a rich club as well we were f foreign owners for a, for a long time now but uh, well done to them. It pains me to say it, but that's it. They've won. They're winning. It's them. They'll be the top two next year. One or both will be probably in the Champions League final. They're that good. Uh, and United, we've United. We've got a long way to go. Um, and uh, it's been a very painful few years, um, particularly since since Sir Alex retired. I think it was six years or six seasons ago now, maybe seven. Um, but I feel the decline in United started before then, and 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 I, for me, the point in history I go back to in my mind is when Cristiano Ronaldo left. Now I know after that there were titles, but I really felt that United weren't at the same level uh, when when Cristiano left, and then when Tevez left. Um, you know, um, it's so 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 it's been hard, and and I know there's been a couple of summers where good players have come in. When Robin van Persie came in, there was a little bit of an upsurge. When Pogba came in, there was a little bit of an upsurge. But I think there's been a general decline. There's there's been this, you know, it's it's just been getting, you know, over say two or three. If you take two or three seasons at a time, it's just been generally in decline. Um, we've spent money. We've brought in marquee players. We've brought in Di Maria, Falcao, Pogba, but we've also spent money on wine unwisely. Um, and thinking of you know Schweinsteiger, Schneiderlin, Bay, Depay, Mkhitaryan, and oof, Sanchez. Um, we've brought in players that at that time don't suit United or the way we were we'd like to play or the way we were playing. And 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 there you've got to look at you know I point out maybe Fellaini and Mata. Uh, and, and Di Maria again. I mean, Matt has been technically one of our better players, but he, he's never really suited the formations that we've, we've tried to play. We've tried to stick him out on the wing, and I don't think that's particularly worked. And when we play him at 10, he, he kind of looks good, but I think the, the team suffers a little bit. He's a really good, a good guy, but uh, and probably our only good set-piece uh, free-kick taker and corner taker, and uh, he's he's better than we've seen in the United shirt and he, I think he's 31 now I think I don't think he's re-signed I, I think we've got to let him go I think he needs a a swan song um and and a and a, and a, a good final few years of his career where he's com in the team every week wherever he goes and he's competing for trophies anyway two seasons ago we finished second and uh Jose said that's his biggest achievement today and everyone scoffed and me included um I thought I thought the team was on the on the up. I didn't think we were anywhere near Man City that year. Um, I think we did really well to finish above Liverpool, but boy, you can see the the plan in action there uh, from from Klopp. Um, the board didn't back Mourinho that summer. Uh, he the last summer he needed money 
Uh, he, he was a money manager. Uh, and we didn't reinforce the defence. We signed Fred for 50 million. And he hasn't been as good as Herrera. I mean, from the very first game, you could see he wasn't up to Herrera's standards. And now Herrera's been let go for free. Uh, we've allowed him to run his contract down. And now we've got to pay to replace him. Um, I mean, Herrera was our engine room. Uh, he was he was one of the guys that really gets stuck in. I like a player that gets stuck in. Um, always motivated, always chasing, contests every challenge. I loved the way he would run to the referee and uh, passionately plead his case when he'd do a horror tackle. And <laughs> don't want to see a horror tackle, but he was never. He always felt he was innocent of everything. That really got stuck in. Uh, I don't know how many times he was on a yellow and he was still getting uh, involved uh, in the play. I really like Torreira. I really like him. I'm really sad that um, you know we've let him go. Now I know he's not the best player in the world, but you know in this United team, he was one of the triers, and and that's one less trier uh, in in the squad now. And uh, unfortunately, we've got to we've got to replace him now. Um, when Oli came in, it was supposed to be temporary. Um, we were going to hire a director of football. I think that's the only point in time. Ed Woodward had the fans on side when he said, look, we're bringing Ollie in temporarily and we're going to hire a director of football. And then just a few months later, you know, he's already given Solskjaer the job. And where's the director of football? I think there's the director of football. It was, that was a big miss. We needed, we needed to get someone, we need to get the right person in. Don't get me wrong, but, um, I don't understand how, you know, he's, he said we were going to have someone in place by the summer and we haven't that, particular statement I think resonated because I think it signaled an understanding from within the club what the fans were saying what the I think the pundits were saying and Gary Neville was saying you know pull him out in on, on, on purpose and specifically but the transfer policy has been going horribly wrong for six or more years I'm not uh, you know I love the great man Sir Alex I don't you know those last few years I think Kagao was brought in as the Rooney replacement and then Rooney didn't go uh, we needed more goals. That's why Van Persie came in. But um, you know, a, a lot of players came to to, to age at the same time, and um, you know, so I'm not quite sure the, the transfer policy was was necessary right for a couple of years there before Sir Alex left. Maybe that's just in hindsight though. Um, but the, you know, with, with no director of football has been hired. Um, Ollie did stunningly well in, at the start. The PSG result convinced everyone, myself included. Um, and I have to be honest, I wanted Pochettino. Uh, I, th I think we've got to go with Oli. I'm happy with Oli. I love Oli. Um, but my opinion was Oli till the end of the season and, and then see if we can't get Pochettino and maybe do it on the quiet. And if, the, if that wasn't possible, then, you know, give Oli the go. I don't know if they did that, but, and, or if they'd even say it publicly, but, uh, I think, I think Pochettino is the best young manager in the world. Um, and, and we're not going to get Pep, we're not going to get Klopp, and I think we missed the boat on Ancelotti, but um, Poch was the guy. But anyway, it's Oli. I think we've got to give him everything. I've got to, we've got to give him support. But I think the, the United have to give him. They have to give him everything he wants in his transfer window. And, he's, and he probably need, he definitely needs more than one transfer window to be successful. Um, I think that also signals we've probably missed out on Pochettino, because I think if you give Oli a year or two, then you know, Pochettino is going to be at Real Madrid or... Juventus or some or one of the other big clubs or Bayern Munich and they could lock him in long term and um and I actually think he want wanted the United job I think he you know he we, we know he's lunched with Sir Alex and I wouldn't be surprised if the you know the conversation privately turned to prospects there and there's rumors in the press that Sir Alex was upset that we didn't give Pochettino a look in um and that's just how I feel as well but anyway Ollie's the man let's talk about Ollie let's talk about the transfers um it it doesn't really matter if it's Oli or Poch because it's the club structure um there's the technical de development the recruitment if if a man of Jose Mourinho's stature at the richest club in the world couldn't um do the job if he couldn't win the the league um or or, or get to the later stages of Champions League or put a, put put the players out and uh, give what the fans wanted and um exciting football you know no one can do it you know, I know it's not necessarily Jose's way. He would argue that, uh, you know, particularly at Real Madrid. But but it's beside the point. It, it's the, 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 the recruitment um, side, the technical side. It's not there. 
United. It's, we might have been the best um, in the country uh, in the 90s and the early noughties, but other clubs have surpassed us. And if, if you're not leading, you're, you're chasing. And in all this time, uh, in Theresa May's and more towards, nothing has changed. Since, since Sir Alex left, nothing has changed. Um, we, we're standing still and others are, are, are innovating and getting better. Um, and then the, the the dressing room seems split. The rumors of the Sanchez, con the rumor is that Sanchez's contract is so inf is so big that a, a number of other players are looking across the the dressing room and saying, "Hang on a minute, you know what's this guy uh, delivering?" And look look what I'm doing. I'm playing more than him. I'm making more assists. I'm you know I'm doing my job better. And here's this guy on all this money. And it seems to have created a divide. Um, this is this is obviously just rumor and speculation. Uh, I'm sure it's not everyone, but it, you know the, these stories are coming out, um, and uh, you know that's their judgment. And then there's you know it's you know it's the same as in the office or other workplaces, and word gets out what someone's on, and someone others feel that they're doing more or you know putting in more of a shift, and it breeds resentment. So um, you know who's deliver you know Pogba now wants to leave, uh, or he says he wants to leave. I don't know if this is a a means to a new contract but uh i think when you say you want a new challenge that's saying i want to leave i remember when rooney said so, something to that effect um and i think he you know never really had the fans on side the same after that and and i think pog was the same but maybe maybe he lost the fans before this but um you know he's he is a terrific player i i think in some ways i mean i i do watch paul pogba and i and i do share what a lot of people say and you know, feel he could run a, run around a bit more, um, you know, and, and, and you know, he sort of gives up the chase a little bit quick. But I also think there's, it's it goes both ways. I think he was sold a promise of a, a big rebuild, and you know, there would be other quality players coming in, uh, and, and this was a, they were going to build a team around him or somewhat around him that was going to be challenging for Premier Leagues and and Champions Leagues. And three years in, we're back to square one. Uh, I, I would be unhappy myself if I was Paul Pogba and, you know, I, I've done, I probably feel I've done my bit here. Where's the recruitment? Where's the, where's the player development? Um, so I'm not surprised if he's angling for a move. A bit disappointed because, it you know, at this pivotal time, we need him. He's our best outfield player, arguably. Um, he's won a World Cup. Why, why can he perform for France and not United? Well, maybe it's not him. Maybe it's maybe it's the team around him. Maybe it's the the formation and the structure and the dressing room and the, everything else. And uh, you know, we've got, we've got to be fair about this. Um, I don't want him to go, but if if he's set on going, I think we've got to get the money and and reinvest it. But it's just one more position that needs filling this year. And and I'll get to what I think about that in a minute. But there's already a lot of positions that need filling. And Inde Gea, uh, you know, hasn't re-signed. Everyone knows this. We've got to get that contract done as soon as possible. Um, if you know, we can't let him go for free. We can't have a Herrera go in this year for free and De Gea next year. Um, we've got to get it tied down, or, or we've got to move him on. And as much as I would say, yeah, we've got to replace De Gea. Maybe you know, if he goes, we're probably going to have to go Romero this year and put that as number one for next year. I don't know. Um, We've got a couple of good young keepers. Uh, you know, I don't think they're ready to come into the first team, but you know, I think uh, the, I think it's Henderson is and the guy's name at Sheffield United. He could probably go there on loan again this year. And Joel Pereira, maybe that's our League Cup um, goalkeeper and backup. I don't know, um, but I, I I think best thing just get to Hayes deal done. Um, it just sounds like it's money in terms. So uh, he he could be our captain next year he's the long you know he's won leagues with us and he's been here long enough and he's a senior player he's he's not shouty uh, he seems to me like a model professional and could lead by ex example but you know he should he I, i'm surprised if he's not a, a, a an influence in the locker room so what, what does he want G give him the money i mean if you're gonna pay sanchez crazy money then you know i can't think of a player in the last eight years that hasn't earned it more than so hey, um, so you know, I hope I hope they both stay. But if you know, taking those players aside, you know, we've got to move on a lot of players. 
you know, I want to talk about players in, but we've got to get a few moving as well. So Rojo's going to have to go. Darmian, Ashley Young, and I think Mata probably needs to go. And of course Sanchez. Um, you've got the, the wage problem, the 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 injuries. You know, he tries. I'm not knocking him there. He, he runs around, but um, the the team's weaker when he's in it. He, he cuts inside, and I, I think it tramples on Pogba and the space they're trying to occupy and I think we need to spread the play wide um, which I think Martial does, and Shaw sort of do a better job connecting on um, but yeah I think it's the wages that are the problem I think you know it's, it's too far ahead of everyone else if not prepared to bring everyone else up probably because they can't afford it because it's ridiculous money but if they can't kind of bring other, others up to that level then um, you know it's, it's creating more problems than it's worth and I think if we're going to have a reset this year and I think we do you know that that's one of the things we've got to address. Lukaku is is rumored to be off. Uh, it looks like he's going to Italy. Um, Matic doesn't look like he might have the legs to cover the ground. Ollie's after. Uh, he's another year older, um, and uh, you know the, we've got the Jones and Smalling axis, and and that needs to come to an end. And I don't think Eric Bay is the answer either. There, he had a brilliant first half of a of a first season. Um, and he just looks reckless to me. Uh, Two-footed challenges, and um, you know, there's been the odd glimpse here and there of a top-class centre half. I don't know if it's coaching or, or what, but uh, I feel like he's gone backwards in terms of performance. Um, so, you know, I don't think he's the answer. Um, we need we need alternatives, and they need to be promoted or recruited. So, I feel um, you know, United going into this window. Pogba and De Gea side, I felt we needed two central defenders, two midfielders, a right back and a right winger. Uh, and that's before Lukaku and obviously Pogba and De Gea, uh, the may go. So I think that's nine, um, nine players that potentially we need to recruit. Um, so far, we've only recruited Daniel James, uh, who's a left winger. And that fills none of the critical roles, none of the, none of the gaps. Um None of the areas that we really need to improve. So, you know, the talk is we're recruiting young, primarily British talent. Um, we want them mobile, we want them good technically, and we want some room for development. Um, but you've got to wonder why it is that United in recent years are kind of struggling to bridge the youth team to the senior team. Um, we, seem to have a, we seem to have these great talent prospects at 18 and 19 and... You know, some of them go off on loan and then they're deemed um, or proven not to be good enough. Um, of, of a few that have made it back into the team, you know, look at Lingard and what, you know, ter terrific uh, fan of the club. And uh, I think he, you know, gives it what he's got uh, when he gets on the field. Um, but is, is he is he a, is he good enough in a in a Champions League Premier League winning team? I I don't think so. But um, uh, you know, Andres Pereira uh, is has, has he been good enough? Has he maybe had the chances? Did we miss the window there? Uh, is, is the potential from youth being utilised and developed and nurtured? And and you know, Tomini is another example. He's a good worker. Is he technically um, a Champions League winning standard? I don't know. I, I think he's perhaps good enough for the squad. Um, I'd see. I, I, I always compare new players to old players. I think I think of him as a as a Darren Fletcher, as the the extra man in midfield, or you know when you need to kind of tighten up. Um, you know, and then you look at Greenwood and Chong and and all the others and Tu and Zabi and you know what, what's the plan? How how do you get these guys good enough for the first team? And not have to go out and spend ninety million on replacements. That's that's the, one of the points of the youth team, right? Make your own players instead of the uh, you know big transfer fees. And I don't, I just don't think um, we've we've seen enough coming through. And I don't think I don't put this on the kids and the and, and all. Some, something just seems to be missing in the in the coaching and that transition. I think we we might have this formula of stick them out on loan and and, and judge them elsewhere. Maybe, maybe you know, some of these players just need to. They need a, a few home games in, in the Premier League or in the League Cup, and 
uh, you know, protected, you know, with first teamers around them. You come in, everyone else is first team around them and they just get to, to do their thing. And, and maybe that would give us a better idea. And I, I'm not sure we see enough. Of that. I think Louis van Gaal was, uh, you know, really did give, try and give youth a chance. And, you know, um, obviously Sir Alex was, was the master of it, but I, I, I don't know if we've done enough of that in the last two or three years. Um, I'd like to see a bit more of it. I'd like to see, uh, you know, Chong maybe given a chance to, it, it, on the, uh, you know, next year. And, 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 and we'll talk about transfer targets, but you know, two and Zabi, you know, I feel like they're just going to stick him out on loan with, with Villa. I, I don't know. I'm, maybe he, you know, there's, there's other options. Um, there's, there's, there's less than two weeks to go before preseason training. There's three weeks until the first uh, preseason game. Uh, and I think we need those nine signings. And, and at the moment, I just don't feel like that's going to happen. Uh, we've got to get deals done. Um, we've just got to get them done, Ed. Pull your socks up, man. Um, I'd love De Litt. I'd love Jaden uh, Sancho. Um, those, I feel, would be real statements of intent. Um, the, the, the talk is Sancho doesn't want to, to drop from Champions League level. Um, and I think the only way we could convince him is if we had you know, a, a suite of um, other good signings that would really kind of sell the club to a, to a Sancho about the intent. I, if you're Jaden Sancho, you must be looking at Paul Pogba and saying, hang on a minute, you, you know, you're pro you, if, if United had been in Sancho, you obviously want to build a team around me and we want to challenge for honours and you want the Champions League. Well, hang, wasn't that, I'm sure that's probably what you offered Pogba three years ago. How, how can I believe that? Um, so if you're going to ask these guys to take a gamble, you know they're going to look at our track record and and it's not good in recent years so you know i understand sancho um it's you know the chap being that he he, he doesn't fancy it and uh you know i don't see him having a change of mind unless maybe we get some other quality players in my prediction is uh he's going to be on real madrid and barcelona's radars next year and, and we're not even going to have a chance even if we've got champions League football, he's going to be gone um, De Litt looked like he was off to Barcelona um, and we swooped in and uh, we, we put the money on the table um, but we couldn't seal the deal United couldn't seal the deal so he's gone off on holiday and now PSG and Juventus are in and so now it looks like it's going to be between Barcelona on improved terms or just a big money move to Paris and you know they're not the Premier League. They're not. They're not the Spanish League. They're not. There's, there's three or four clubs there, and um, it, it he gets his Champions League football and a big paycheck. But it's such a shame. I mean, that De Litt could really be a, a, a top, top, top player. Um, and it would, it would have, he would have been perfect for United. Some le some young leadership in in the team. Look how he's led Ajax to the semi-finals. He looks terrifically impressive in both boxes. Um, and and d development uh, potential is is just phenomenal. He could he could be a United centre half for fifteen years, or he could come in and you know come to United, do five years, and and if he wants to go to Barcelona, go then, and he'd be guaranteed first team by then. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I think we I think uh, we we had a chance and we didn't see or do it. And if we were if it transpires that we're you know penny pinching and. Uh, you know, we'll give you more than Barcelona, but only this much. And then PSG come in, and you've turned the lad's head. Then we've only ourselves to blame, really. If you're gonna swoop, swoop, but get the deal done. Um, you know, and then so an, a quality centre half. I, I haven't seen too much of him, but ev everyone raised around Koulibaly. Um, there seems to be a lot of talk about Koulibaly at the end of last season, and that seems to have gone cold. And uh, again, I think it's the price. I don't want to be ripped off. Um, uh, you know, but uh, you know, it's United money's United fan money as much as anything. But um, what's happened to that one? Why were we working on that all year? We, you know, we linked to him last year. I mean, how how does that not come off? If if Koulibaly is the guy we're after, how come that one wasn't done in May? I don't know. Uh, so so you know, Harry Maguire's the man. It seems I like him. I think he's England's best centre half. Uh, I wanted him last summer. Uh, I, I remember watching the World Cup. I didn't know much about him. In that first game, I thought he had a, a shaky first 15 minutes and then he grew into the game and he was brilliant. And then by the end of the game and for the rest of the tournament, he was probably England's best player. 
Um, I like him. I, I'm not convinced he's worth 100 million, 80 million world record defender fees. Um, but this whole situation uh, and not lining up deals way in advance, that's partly what inflates the price. Uh, there's the urgency of trying to do it all within the transfer window. And then there's the Man United tax. Um, if Man United are interested, the price goes up. It happens to every player. It's been happening for decades now. But it needs to be Maguire and another centre half. Uh, Bay, Rojo, and Joneses and Smalls, Smallings. You know, that just you know we've got to we've got to bring some other players in. Uh, I'd like Delit and Maguire. That's what I want. That that would be the dream. Um, and again, do, do we bring Tu and Zabi back? Um, I think they'll stick him out on loan. But United have uh, in recent years. Just go through my notes, trying to bullet point my way through this uh, this rant. But um, you know we've got a history of of needing uh, to to pull in central defensive midfielders into defence. You know I remember Keane doing it, Carrick doing it, and very recently McTominay having to do it, and we're asking them to do a job there. And we're slating the you know the the availability and selections at that point. But, but maybe uh, Tuan Zabi comes back as the number four or the number five, and and he he gets to play the domestic cups, and you know he's first name on the on the page then. Uh, and then when we've got fixture congestion and injuries, you know he could come in. Hopefully the the lad can stay fit, and um, you know if we can give him, you know eighteen twenty games next year, who's to say maybe that's better uh, in a in a Europa League season than than thirty eight games at Villa. With you know, and then expecting to come back and just kind of slot in. I don't know, uh, but certainly if we don't get um, Maguire plus another player, then another central defender, then you know I think that's an interesting conversation that we, we might come back to. So you've got Darmian that has to leave, Valencia. I think he's gone, um, and sorry, but actually you're just not good enough. <laughs> um, we need a, we need a, we need a proper right back. Uh, Delo excites me. I think that was a, a good Jose Mourinho signing. Um, but he doesn't seem to have won Oli over for some reason. Young was, you know, getting the, the nod over him, and when Oli was picking him or, or bringing him on, he seemed to be playing him a bit further forward. Um, I don't want to see Delo as the, as the right winger. Uh, I want to see him as the right back getting forward, um, and that's where you know Wan Bissaka comes in. Uh, him or Munier works fine for me. Um, get the deal done is what I say. I think Wan Bissaka would be. A good signing fits the profile, you know, young, talented. Um, and from what I know of him, I think he's more of a defensive right back, uh, perhaps more of a Darmian. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe that's, you know, that's the selection choice then. You know, if you want, want the right back bombing on, then stick on Delo. And if you want uh, to tighten up, then it's Wan Bissaka and it gives maybe Oli some options. Um, either or, I mean, but again, you know, we've been talking about Wamba Saka, or, or the media's been talking about Wamba Saka for for over a week, and was the deal not getting done? Um, you know, we we haggling over a little bit of money, a little bit of little bit of money. Um, we always seem to want to complicate these deals with add-ons, and you know, the the player has to win this and do that. And you know, to me, in this window, you've got to get the deals done. And, and we haven't. I don't even got the luxury of um, of time to negotiate complex structures and payments if if they want 50 million if crystal palace want 50 million that's the price and if you're not going to pay it i think move on and, and and get on to the next one but you know um we've got to, we've got to cut through and i mean you know i, I hope the fans are, you know we've got to hold uh, the club to account here um if they don't get the, the work done then uh, we've got to you know we've got to let them know that we're not happy um, and if it's not Sancho at right wing, I don't know who, um, really. Uh, I, I don't think Delo should be um, uh, converted as such. We keep converting players, bringing players in in one position, try and convert them. I don't think it necessarily works. It hasn't worked for one matter. Um, I don't see Lingard uh, consistently performing at right wing. Um, and so if it's not Sancho, you, you know, have to question who is it? Um, the, the Pepe's been mentioned, Lozano's been mentioned. I don't really know too much about either of them, really, if I'm honest. But uh, I want to know what's happening. I, you know, if for all the speculation, and some of it's nonsense, I'm sure. But 
you know, I, I've not really seen anything solid to say with, with looking at recruiting in uh, the right wing. And, uh, you know, it, it might not be the top priority right now. And maybe Maguire and Wamba Saka are, uh, you know, more pressing at the moment. But uh, I just don't know. And, and I think Lozano is holding off uh, on a move. Perhaps there's an interest. That I've seen that's been suggested. But, you know, there's another one. We've got to get, got to get that position recruited for. Um, we were talking about uh, in the or people have been talking about Bruno Fernandez, and that's just taking too long as well. Um, and 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 I I feel and I fear that City or Liverpool are going to swoop, and he's he whereas he could could be a United first team where he's going to go be a squad player at you know at Liverpool or or City. Um, and if Pogba goes, you know, next year our, our our midfield might be Fred McTominay and Pereira. And maybe Malic comes in, but I don't know. But we're not getting top four with that, with those. That's not a top four midfield, um, you know. And, and I would worry if that's our plan because we need we need depth, we need quality, we need rotation. Um, so Ed, get Bruno Fernandez signed up. If you have to fly to his holiday home, um, if you need to go catch him in the restaurant, uh, bring a suitcase full of cash. Go get it done. Um, and then we need another midfielder. And uh, Declan Rice and Longstar are uh, they're the ones being mentioned as alternatives, um, and 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 I'm not against signing one or one of them, um, but to me that's potential uh, rather than uh, performance next year. This that, that that's development. I don't know how much more they're going to give us than say McTominay or Pereira in August or, or September or at crunch time. So I think you know those are interesting names, but. You know, to me, that's if we sign a third midfielder, that's maybe more of a, you know, and keep Pogba, that's maybe more where that they would fit in, more of a, you know, rotational options. But we need, a, I think we need a, a defensive central midfielder. I like Matic, but I, I just don't think he's mobile enough now. Um, and and I, sus, I, you know, we all think we can read the manager's mind from time to time. I I don't think he fancy, I don't think Oli fancies uh, Matic. Um, and uh, I think he was even. I think that might have been behind the switch to a diamond late on in the uh, in the season was to was you know not requiring a CDM to have to 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 move as much and cover as much ground and uh, uh, put a few more players in the middle to to kind of occupy. But um, I if if I had a dream CDM, obviously I, I think most well a lot of people would agree. I think Kante would be would be perfect and. Uh, you know his partnership with Pogba for France and uh, it being Premier League proven and a winner. You know he's won uh, multiple Premier Leagues. I don't see Chelsea allowing it. That's fancy uh, talk, but uh, that's the kind of player I'd, I'd really like to see. I think um, you know, of course, you know Chelsea might be up for a new manager, and who you know maybe maybe that's a route in if uh, someone comes in and don't fancy Kante, but I think he's generally well appreciated as, as, as one of the best in his position, if not the best in, in the world. Um, and then Bele is interesting. Uh, it sounds like he's got his sights set on Spurs. Um, Thomas Partey has been mentioned. I don't really know much about him. Uh, Rabiot would be good. Um, and, and maybe that's the two Fernandez and Rabiot. And then um, he's on a free. So obviously that saves us some money. Uh, but when Lukaku goes, you know, are we going to go with uh, Rashford up front? Or Rashi, as uh, Oli likes to call him. Um, and if so, you know, well, it's interesting, you know, just speculating. Is it, so is it Martial is going to come in and back up or Greenwood? And, you know, or will Lingard perhaps be deployed as a false nine uh, from time to time? I don't know. Um, I really like Marcus Rashford. I think he's... You know, I look, I compare him in my mind to to Harry Kane. He's a couple of years younger, obviously, and I think he can be as good as, as Harry Kane is for, for Spurs. He needs that chance. He, but but I'm nervous. I'm nervous about going into the season uh, with just Rashford. Um, he didn't have a great end of season at United. Uh, he looks a lot better for England uh, actually. Um, a few weeks ago, um, maybe he's got caught up in the the dressing room stuff. I don't know, but. Uh, I, I, I like him. I think that he's more likely to to meet the um, demands and and the expectations and uh, and improve and develop and be that. I mean, he could be one of the best in the world. I really think he could be. 
but just relying on Rashford, you know, we need we need some depth. Um, and uh, you know, I don't see Martial as a centre forward. Uh, maybe in a partnership, um, you know, he could be the man to drop off. But uh, you know, and then you know, it just feels like a risk. You, you need we need goals in the team, and I don't think we was we definitely weren't scoring enough last year. Um, and and if if we hit the ground. Um, and, and carry on where we left off, then you know we we're going to be in trouble three or four games in. And you know goals, is, we need goals. We need that threat going forward. We need to be mobile. So, you know, Ollie, you know, if Rashford's the man, you know, I like him. I, I want to see him um, push on and improve. Um, I think he can do it, but uh, you know, I feel like it. It still feels like a gamble to me. You know, uh, and I don't know really. I mean, if, when Lukaku goes, you know, maybe we should find a. You know, another centre forward. I, I don't know, but again, maybe maybe this is the chance for uh, you know Greenwood to come in and and uh, maybe he'll grab the opportunity and, and run with it. Um, so for priorities, you know, for next season, uh, you know, I think I think we've um, we've got to look at the recruitment. Um, you know, it's everything we've, I'm talking about is a consequence of poor recruitment in recent years. Um, we, we need a proper director of football uh, and I don't mean uh, a former player in, in Rio or Darren Fletcher. We need someone that has been and proven themselves as a director of football. Um, in my mind, if I, I'm not a football man, I don't work for a football club, I feel like, you know, there would be these sessions between the manager, the recruitment department and the, and the youth development and, and you'd get the top guys there and you'd have it up on a whiteboard and you'd say, look, here's, here's, the, here's our best 11 now. Here's where we'd like to be in a year, two years, three years, and then you get all everyone together and say, "Look, here's our youth prospects. He's got, he could be good enough in this position. He could be good. He's going to replace this guy. He's going to replace that guy." And you get the recruitment guys in, and they say, "No, no, here, here, here's someone who we've got potential. We're talking to. We're watching him, um, and and he 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 could you know." And then they compare like the youth guy to the prospect, and the uh, you know, and, and really you know bring the, all of those parts together, and and that's not what I think is happening. I think what happens is we, we go through the season. Uh, we look at the youth every now and then I'm sure Ollie and previous managers go and watch the games, um, from time to time. And then, you know, it's all kind of weighed up in, within the transfer window. What about this guy? What about that guy? Um, and, and, and maybe that would refine the, I, the thinking about who the key players who maybe need a, you know, we might need to just put a little bit more investment in and, you know, from the, from the youth team and, or, or really start to think about, you know, the prospects of opening up conversations and being aware of contract situations and finding all this stuff out, maybe a year or two in advance sometimes. But we need a director of football that can bring that all together. I'm not saying um, I want someone to go out and recruit players and hand them to the manager and he's got no say. You know, I think there needs to be a process. And I think if you put that all in place, you, you, you turn around and you say, look, uh, Ed, Sorry, man. You, you had you, you had your chance, but uh, you, you know, you give us a budget, we'll work to it. Uh, you you know, your say on recruitment's kind of done. Um, I'm sure you could loop him in and say, hey, you know, what's the commercial prospects here and there that we might want to, you know, work into the contract negotiations, and you'd have to have some cost share. But as far as player recruitment and identifying targets and the actual negotiation and process, we've got to get Ed out of it. I mean, he's he's a bank manager. Um, go make the money so they can do their job um get him out of it um and then um you know Moyes when he when he left i think he made a comment and said look you know he was surprised he walked into man united so alex had left and david giller left and he, you know he said well what are your transfer targets and apparently they had nothing and uh, they had nothing lined up and they just expected him to come in so it's back to the structure if it doesn't work out with ollie um you know, it doesn't matter if you bring in Pochettino or, or Pep Guardiola. They're not going to turn the team around. Then there is no plan. It needs to be the structure to say, look, here, here's here's the players we got. Here's the here's the backups. Here's the squad. Here's the people given opportunity to. But here's who we've got in mind for the future. Here's who we're going to go after next year. Here's here's why you need to stick to this plan or this formation or whatever. Um, but if 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 it's not all working in the back and you put that on the coach or the manager. Um, I think it takes something away. Uh, I, I think they need to be involved, but uh, if you leave it to them to to to, to organise all of that, as well as the first team, as well as the you know the, the the training and everything, 
it just doesn't work. Sir Alex was a freak of nature. He he, he could do it all. The world's moved on. Uh, the game's moved on. You know, there, there are there's, there's a reason um, other clubs are paying good money to have these structures in place. It works. Um, and 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 you know we've got to get you know we've got to get past this idea that because Sir Alex could do it, anyone can do it. Um, they need the support, you know. And if we get a, another Sir Alex in, and you know, they prove they can do it, and then you know they can tinker with the structure a little bit. But that's for down the line. It's at the moment the coaches we're looking at. We need we need structure and support. So, and uh, so, you know, moving on. But next year, you know, we've got to get top four. And and on the current trajectory of transfer window. Uh, progress, you know, I don't see it happening at the moment. We we, we need the signings. Um, we've got to go on to pre-season training, and Oli wants everyone back fit and and, and ready and raring to go. And as obviously, there's you know, we haven't cleared out the dressing room, um, and all of the same problems that were there, or problem players and issues that were there at the end of the season, are just going to come walking back through the door in a few weeks. Uh, we need we need that fresh impetus. We need fresh ideas. We need fresh um enthusiasm um and so as you say you know the enthusiasm you get from youth you know it's it's really infectious um whatever it is i mean i don't know all the issues you know it's all speculation but we you can't we can't just ignore it and just think it'll be all right we've got to get all the players i've mentioned moved on um now i'd say prioritize bringing other players in absolutely we, you know our transfer window shuts earlier than everyone else's but um you know, we're not doing a job. We're not bringing players in quick enough. Um, we've got to get. I think we've got to get Maguire and Wamba Saka done this week, um, because I say we need nine. But you know, if we get stuck with just four or, or, or five, then you know, anything less than five is a disaster. Um, and uh, you know, Daniel James didn't really fill one of those key roles either. So you know, that's why I say five. I mean, really, we need you know six to nine. Um, we've got to we've got to hit the ground running when when, when we get going uh, we've got to start with a win against chelsea we've got i think we've got europa qualifiers so we've got to win those early games we've got to get um we've got to get the you know i think there's usually three weeks before the first international window and you can usually tell the or recently you can get a good idea how the season's going to go by how we do in those games because it's like a you know it's like a false start the premier league isn't it you have to kind of get excited and you have three weeks and then off they go again but um you know, I think if you know we're really going to struggle if we don't if, if if the mindset's not right and we don't win against Chelsea, it's just going to be a struggle. Uh, and so Oli, you know, he needs he needs a win. He needs to hit the ground running. You know, we're not going to get top four uh, if we've got to fight it out with, with with we know what this this squad's like. And if we're not replacing enough of the players, then it's just not going to happen. Um, you know. We've got to get the the poison in the dressing dressing room. It's got to be quashed. Um, we need, you know, and if it doesn't work for Ollie, then you know, we we we've got to change tact again. I don't I don't think we can go. Oh, it didn't work for Ollie. Let's bring in Ryan Giggs or, you know, Nicky Butt or um, Gary Neville. You know, we've got to go for a top top manager then you know we've got to we've got to go and get a pochettino and ancelotti and it, honestly if it doesn't work out for ollie at you know i quit it it's not working out for ed either um if, if if you could if you don't put it right then um you know i just don't think we can keep doing this over and over again i i, I think i hope the glaciers see that um i want to see free-flowing fast attacking football i want to see wingers i want to see united youth team in the senior team I want to see that transition from you know youth to to to, to stars and uh, you know it's uh, I want to see I want to see progress I want to see I want to see transfers coming in so Ed I said it before I say it again pull your socks up man pull your socks up anyway uh, I've gone on long enough I think um, I'm not excited I, w I want to be excited for for Man United I want to be excited for the new season I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the the transfer window is supposed to be an exciting time and we're not celebrating trophies not this year um we're nowhere near the the league uh, title we're not even in the champions league and uh and it's you know it's it's depressing and uh, you know I want that enthusiasm back and uh I want to be able to talk excitedly about man united and the and the games coming up and the players we're bringing in and how they're performing and 
you know, we've got a long way to go. We're going backwards still. I think we, I don't think we've arrested the, uh, the the decline yet. I think we've really got to get the clear out done, really reset. I, I, I like some of the things Ollie's been saying uh, last year, and uh, you know, I really feel like if we can hit, if we can get a good start, we can get a good number of transfers in there's a chance we can turn it around and you know be heading in the right direction i think we're you know even with a good a good transfer window now i still feel with three years off even just challenging um liverpool and city they're so far ahead they're not going to stand still they're going to be they're still going to be recruiting um players and they've got the, some of the best uh particularly city i've got some of the best youth players going um and uh, they seem, you know, they just seem to, they, they just don't ever seem weak in, in any area, you you know, and um, not anymore. I mean, Liverpool, for sure. I mean, they needed a centre-half and a goalkeeper. I mean, I've been saying it for years. And they, boy, did they, uh, did they recruit well in, uh, in uh, Virgil van Dijk. So, you know, we're a long way off. Um, and uh, and, it, and it makes me sad. And uh I, you know, I'm like I think every United fan. This, this, this. Get behind. I want to get behind the team, but Ed, you're not making it easy. You are not making it easy. Um, so that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, it, you know, if you have actually sat through and and listened to me, um, you know, please, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment. Um, and uh, you know, United is uh, it's my team. I'm going to touch on it in much more, uh, or many more times, but uh, not for not as long of a rant. We can touch on the topics and kind of drop it in. So, foundational um, rant there from me. Um, I hope you're having a great day, and uh, if not, I hope it, it gets better. But thanks for listening. Take care. Have a great day.